Hi, I'm Liz Thompson, Associate Editor at Immunity, and I'm at the Cold Spring Harbor Symposium on um, quantitative biology. The topic of this meeting is immunity and tolerance. Um, this afternoon I'm talking to Fiona Powery from the University of Oxford. Hi. Hi. Um, so your research focuses on how um, homeostasis is achi achieved in the intestine and how this goes awry in patients with inflammatory bowel disease. Um, so to begin, can you tell us why the gut is so important and um, why we should care about it? Yeah, it's an area that's uh, getting increasing attention. Uh, we know that the intestine is a huge surface. If you were to take out our guts and roll them out, they would fill the space of two tennis courts. So it's an enormous area for the immune system to be interested in. There are more immune cells in the gut than anywhere else in the body. And this is where we encounter the majority of infectious agents. They come into the body through the gastrointestinal tract. So the immune system here must be able to respond appropriately to these potential pathogens. But at the same time, the gut houses a huge number of intestinal microbes. Now these are friendly uh, bacteria. Uh, they uh, play an important role in nutrition. They help us to digest components of food that we, we can't ourselves. They occupy some parts of the gut that prevent these pathogens from being able to uh, gain access to the body. Yep and they also stimulate the immune system, so they're very beneficial to us. But this presents an enormous problem for our immune systems because they must be able to distinguish between our friends and our foes in terms of beneficial bacteria and pathogens. Okay. And most of us are able to do this very well. We're able to live with all of this large number of intestinal bacteria without mounting an inflammatory response to them the way we would a pathogen. But for some individuals, this communication, this relationship breaks down, just the way many relationships can break <laughs> down. And that can lead to a, a, an aberrant, dysregulated inflammatory response to these normal, friendly bacteria. And that is thought to underlie uh, diseases such as inflammatory bowel disease, where there's a chronic inflam inflammatory response to uh, these resident bacteria. Um, and so your work has, some of your work is focused on how the balance between affected T cells and suppressor T cells is established in the gut um, and how molecules such as the cytokines IL-10 and IL-23 contribute to this. Um, what's been most exciting or surprising from these studies? Well, it's, I think the first thing we have to say is it's a very complicated system and multiple pathways seem to be involved in controlling this intestinal homeostasis. But some of our work in, in model systems, uh, quite a lot of years ago, uh, led to models of intestinal inflammation that resemble aspects of inflammatory bowel disease. And in those, there were alterations in particular populations of T cells that are now termed regulatory T cells, yep. whose role is to suppress the immune response. When one thinks about the immune system and infection, you think about activating the right type of response to be able to get rid of these uh, harmful pathogens. But what we and others have been describing are populations of T cells that are dedicated to controlling the immune response, to suppressing responses where they shouldn't occur. And these are called regulatory T cells. And what we found was that when we manipulated those, so there were lower levels of these in our model systems, they, the mice would spontaneously develop an inflammatory bowel disease-like syndrome. And this led to the idea that these are an, an important component of intestinal homeostasis. And one of the ways that they work is through secreting a protein, uh, a cytokine, which is the way that uh, immune cells can communicate with each other called interleukin-10. Yep. And what became, that was very exciting to, to, to be able to identify that. But the relevance of that has been revealed a bit more recently in terms of human disease, uh, because there are some forms of inflammatory bowel disease that develop very early uh, in, uh, in, in children, pediatric early onset inflammatory bowel disease. And these have a strong genetic component, and it's been shown that about 15% of those very early onset IBDs in young children uh, are attributable to deficiencies in IL-10. 
Okay. So you can see that uh, a very important pathway that actually in this situation is, is non, non redundant. We really can't do without it. Yeah. Okay. And if you think about what we've learned about um, intestinal homeostasis and the immune system in the gut over the past five to 10 years, what would you be most excited about from a translational aspect? Um, my understanding is it's quite a difficult disease to target tra um, therapeutically because it's so heterogeneous. It's a very heterogeneous disease. Um, some patients will respond to corticosteroids or other types of immune suppressive agent that essentially reduce the activity of the immune system. And they'll do very well. You don't see them very often at clinic. Yep. Others do not respond to these. Uh, they develop more severe um, f uh, progressive disease, which often results in surgery. So it's very debilitating. And at the moment, we've got no way of telling who is going to respond and who isn't. And I think that comes down to not being able to c identify what the primary problems are. And that's going to be different in different subsets of patients. So a very important part will be to subdivide patients based on their primary problems. And another very ex exciting area, I think, will be understanding the intestinal microbes themselves. Yep. So we are understanding that different sorts of microbes can induce different sorts of immune responses. And that's something we've been talking about here at the Cold yep. Spring Harbor meeting. And if we can harness that potential, then we might be able to manipulate the microbiota, the intestinal bacteria in patients that have disease to restore it to more normality, which might include increasing regulatory T cells and IL-10. Okay. And is there any evidence at the moment that these bacteria can um, regulate IL-10 and, and Tregs? I mean, there is evidence. Um, it's clear that certain sorts of bacteria can induce IL-10. Uh, these have been identified yep. um, primarily, again, in model systems. Yep. So we and others have, have shown certain sorts of bacteria that seem to promote interleukin-10. There's a lot of interest in understanding the molecular pathways behind that because yep. we might be able to use drugs for example to try to to stimulate that and this is the type of assay that is now being used in humans to understand what sorts of um, bacteria might do this but a, a, an area that uh, is, is receiving interest and um, it's just not very tasteful <laughs> is is transferring um, feces from normal individuals into patients with either serious gut infections or even in some inflammatory bowel disease patients. <laughs> and the theory behind that is to try to restore the normal balance, some of which is to do with IL-10, others of which is to do with uh, maintaining and enhancing the intestinal epithelial cell barrier. So there's great excitement in the community <laughs> uh, to move away from fecal transfer, uh, transfers to actually more defined populations of microbes and maybe particular molecules yeah. uh, from a microbe that would actually stimulate these types of uh, pathways. So I think we're developing tools to characterize the microbiota, understand a little bit about these bacteria uh, the next stage is, is to be able to be more refined in, in how we try to replace their activity. Yeah, and so is there an understanding of how they contribute to IBD as well? Well, does that be in the context of the T-Regs? It's, it's, it's known that there are dysregulated responses to uh, intestinal bacteria. Um, there's evidence from epidemiological studies that uh, children that have had high levels of antibiotic therapy Yep. when they were young are more likely to develop inflammatory bowel disease. Uh, so that would suggest that there's a, a microbial component uh, and that altering that balance in early childhood is perhaps not a good thing yep. for the immune system as it develops alongside those bacteria. But the challenge is for all of us is what is good? What is intestinal health? Yeah. Uh, in terms of the makeup of the bacteria, in terms of the makeup of the immune cells uh, that are, are, are present. Okay, and so given all that, what do you think the exciting questions are for the next five to ten years? What do you think we'll be hearing about at the next immunology meeting? 
I think we'll make great advances in, in understanding the microbiota, yep. in understanding how they communicate with the immune system and all of the metabolites that they produce that are present in the host that then influence immunity in general. So we've been talking about inflammatory bowel disease, but we know that when you um, um, treat individuals over long periods with antibiotics and various other types of um, changes in lifestyle that are, are, are kind of current in the developed world, this leads to a higher incidence of a, a number of inflammatory diseases. So as we start to understand these messages, I think they'll be having impact on not only IBD, but other diseases of our time, such as allergy, uh, obesity, uh, and type, uh, type 1, type 2 diabetes. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you for talking to us. Pleasure.